Hello, my horror-loving dudes. I'm Killjoy Jake, and today we have updates on a whole bunch of horror stuff. American Horror Story Season 12, Terrifier 3, Evil Dead Rise, and Scream 6. Let's get into all of it. Well, sometimes that is better. Starting off with our first big update today, talking about American Horror Story Season 12. Yesterday, it was announced that Kim Kardashian and Emma Roberts will be starring in this bad boy. Emma Roberts and Kim Kardashian are set to headline the brand new 12th season of American Horror Story, which will premiere this summer. The first teaser came out yesterday, which teased that Kim Kardashian and Emma Roberts are delicate. Kind of a weird way to describe people. I mean, I guess we're all delicate. Life can end at any moment. All right, now that that's sunk in, let's move on to the update. THR has stated that this season is titled Delicate and is based at least in part on Danielle Valentine's upcoming novel, Delicate Condition. Now, I actually looked up the book on Amazon to get more of a detailed understanding of what this book is going to be about. Let's read it. Delicate Condition's plot synopsis reads, Anna Alcott is desperate to have a family, but as she tries to balance her increasingly public life as an indie actress with a grueling IVF journey, she starts to suspect that someone is going to great lengths to make sure Sure that never happens. Crucial medicines are lost, appointments get swapped without her knowledge, cryptic warnings have her jumping at shadows, and despite everything she's gone through to make this pregnancy a reality, not even her husband is willing to believe that someone is playing twisted games with her. Then her doctor tells her she's had a miscarriage, except Anna's convinced she's still pregnant despite everything the grave-faced men around her claim. She can feel the baby moving inside her, can see the strain it's taking on her weakened body, vague warnings become direct threats as someone stalks her throughout the bleak ghost town of the snowy Hamptons. As her symptoms and sense of danger grow ever more horrifying, Anna can't help but wonder what exactly she's carrying inside of her, and why no one will listen when she says something is horribly, painfully wrong. Am I the only one who basically just read the plot synopsis for Rosemary's Baby? Because I'm pretty sure that was just Rosemary's Baby. Now, as an open-minded individual, I'm going to give American Horror Story Season 12 a chance. How I've always felt about the show is that it's very hit or miss. Some seasons are excellent, some some seasons, not as much. Will Kim Kardashian be a focus of the show or an opening kill, like Adam Levine's character in season two? These questions have yet to be answered, but if there's one thing we can all get excited about, it's more Emma Roberts. Anytime my girl Jill Roberts is in something, you know I'm gonna be watching it. Getting into an Evil Dead Rise update, talking first a little bit about Bruce Campbell, who's going to be on Impractical Jokers this Thursday on True TV. But we have much more to talk about than some jokes and especially if they're impractical. We gotta talk about this brand new clip for Evil Dead Rise. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. I said it in my last Evil Dead Rise video, but please, if you're excited for this movie, do not watch that final trailer that just came out. You can watch this clip that came out today. This spoiled less than that last trailer, but oh man, that last trailer just spoiled so many big surprises about the movie. I urge you not to watch it. I will urge you, however, to go see this bad boy on April 21st when it drops because it's an absolute banger. What's great about this new clip we just got yesterday is that it's not really super spoilery. I tweeted yesterday that about 15 seconds after this clip is when shit hits the fan, but we haven't quite gotten to the fan shitting yet. This was just the right amount of tease. We've seen most of this footage in the trailer already. Perfect. That's all good. But there's some other stuff that happens in Evil Dead Rise that took me by surprise, and I'm really glad I didn't have anything spoiled for this movie before I saw it. This movie does some horrifying things that maybe some other horror films can only dream of. And I wouldn't want that spoiled for you Evil Dead, Deadite love and fans, come on! It's getting some crazy reviews across the board. Megan Navarro from Bloody Disgusting said that Evil Dead Rise is an absolute crowd pleaser that's best enjoyed with a rowdy crowd of fellow fans. That couldn't be more true, so go see this bad boy in the theater opening weekend. Trust me, it's going to be a blast. Now getting into a Terrifier 3 update, something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, there just has not been any updates. At some point in the future, I'll be making a video on everything we know about Terrifier 3 so far, as well as some other things that I was kind of talking to Damien Leon about about at Horror Hound a few weeks ago. I just keep talking about Horror Hound and I apologize to those of you who have heard me say these things like a million times. It was a life-changing weekend though. I got to meet so many Terrifier people. It was awesome. Just like bottom line, one of the coolest experiences of my life. But something interesting coming from David Howard Thornton's Facebook page is that he recently revealed that Art the Clown is not human. Talking about the differences between a typical zombie and a revenant, David Howard Thornton confirmed that Art the Clown leans a little more towards what a revenant is. Now, if the first thing that comes to mind is that Leonardo DiCaprio movie with the bear, that's not what I'm talking about here. Trust me, that's what I thought too. But no, a revenant is actually somebody who was once dead, but has now come back to life. So as we know from the ending of Terrifier 2, Art the Clown died and came back as a head, and he was rebirthed 
through another one of his victims. Old Vicky gave birth to his head. That was the ending of Terrifier 2. Well, well, what an ending. I mean, truly a G-rated masterpiece. <laughs> but I would also suggest that maybe this isn't the first time this has happened for the character. Clearly, there are some crazy supernatural things going on here that will probably get explained in the next entry. David Howard Thornton and Damien Leone are teasing a little bit of a darker future for Art the Clown in Terrifier 3. Terrifier 2 was amazing, but it was absolutely played for laughs at certain points. It seems like Terrifier 3 will go back to the feeling of All Hallows Eve, where Art the Clown is kind of like this looming dark figure in the background who comes full force for the ending. No spoilers, but the ending of that one is something else, man. <laughs> now, it's not really much of an update to say Art the Clown's supernatural, but there is obviously something more to this. There's going to be some backstory that maybe connects to Sienna's dad, perhaps? I don't think that Art the Clown is actually Sienna's dad resurrected or anything like that, but... Maybe? You think they would recognize their dad, though, even if he had white makeup on his face? I, I don't know, man. There's gotta be some kind of connection between Art the Clown and the Shaw family, though, and that it will probably learn about a little more in Terrifier 3. I am super hyped for it, and I can't wait to be getting some bigger updates on the film. Now, talking a little bit about Scream 6, I have two things to talk about specifically with this film. Some box office records it's breaking, and also the 4K release. Stuff that's going to be on that disc, and stuff that's surprisingly not going to be on there. First and foremost, Scream 6 has broken some box office records recently by passing up the original film at the domestic box office. The original Scream film made $103 million at the box office, adjusted for inflation, and the new one has just crossed over into $104 million. Like I've said before on this page, it's not really a competition of which movie makes more money, it's just the fact that this series is still lucrative this far into the game. That means we'll be seeing some more Scream films in the future. I know a lot of us are worried about Scream 7, but I promise you it's happening at some point in the near future. Even if Radio Silence, Guy Busick, and James Vanderbilt are aren't attached to it. It'll still happen. I also want to talk about the physical release for Scream 6 that drops on July 25th of this year. Super hyped for that. I can't wait. I just pre-ordered the Steelbook. I am dying to watch that movie again. Something interesting about the special features, though, is that it includes an audio commentary of the film, Dying for an Apartment, an exploration of the stunts performed in the film, Bloodbath in the Store, a look at the franchise's action sequences, Death Comes to Town, bringing terror to the Big Apple, Faces of Death, the four main characters and the new blood. More meta than and meta, the nods to the previous films, Horror Night in the Subway, construction of a subway station for one of the scariest scenes in the movie, Cinema of Blood inside the extensive sanctuary with props and costumes from the film, and Outtakes, the hilarious moments behind the scenes. Now something feels to be a little amiss here, something related to some of those scenes that might have gotten deleted from the film. No deleted scenes! Announced, like across the board, anywhere you go, any reliable source talking about this, nothing about deleted scenes. Now, it's a little shocking that we don't have any deleted scenes on this disc, especially after Radio Silence confirmed that there was a bonus scene with Gail Weathers we never saw in the film. Apparently, she had a whole monologue talking about the events of the film from a hospital bed. We never got to see that. Now, I'll admit that might have been a bit of a drag in the fireball of a third act that we got from Scream 6, so I understand why it was cut from the film, but I still want to see it. <laughs> I really want to see it, actually. Once again, I understand why it was cut. Gail's limited presence in the movie is a bit of a criticism of the film, but I feel like it works. I actually think it's really fitting that one of the last things that Gail Weathers says in the film is something pertaining to Sydney. I'm sure this monologue would have just been an extension of that, essentially, and I think we said everything we needed to say in that one line. But once again, that's just coming from some dude in his bedroom guessing about this. I actually want to be able to see it and then, you know, form my own opinion. But I guess that day will never come. We'll never see any of the deleted scenes from Scream 6, unless there's something that's kind of wrong about this. Maybe it's just implied that deleted scenes will come with a movie at this point. I don't know. Keeping my fingers crossed right now that we get some deleted scenes for Scream 6, but what do you guys think about all of these updates? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this brand new horror update video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to support this channel further. Thank you all for watching again, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all. Princess wave to the camera. Mm, yes, thank you for watching. Mm, yes. <laughs>